All right, we're gonna do another audio audio post, okay? <laughs> this is before the State of the Union, but after seeing one of the funniest moments I've ever seen, and uh, sorry, but I'm in my car, so I can't actually play the video or the audio of Cory Booker just being a moron, being a complete idiot. This man wants to be president of anything, <laughs> anything, why, why would you vote for Cory Booker after the, you know, the, the clown job that he did today when he was on the Judiciary Committee interviewing, uh, the, her name is Naomi Rao, I saw this uh, lady, Indian lady, uh, who's in the running to be the nominee for the D.C. Circuit Court federal court replacing uh kavanaugh so anyway but please uh first first remember this this seat if they would have nominated some dude some white dude people have been like oh uh, you know it's a, it's a huge um you know it's a it's a huge position they could have given it to some minority okay so the trump administration nominates this lady who happens to be of persian indian descent uh, and I looked her up very briefly. And, you know, I, I'm not sure whether her legal opinions are ones that I would agree with, because, to be honest with you, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not an expert on the judiciary. So it could be that she's not a great nominee. It could be that she's a fantastic nominee. But what did Cory Booker ask her? He started grilling her on whether she thought that gay relationships were a sin. And he even made <laughs> a bizarre statement, must have been a Freudian slip of some sort, wondering whether African-American relationships are a sin. And I want to wonder what the hell does that even mean? Because I, I, as far as I know, African-American is not some sort of uh, sexual orientation or, or anything. Really, it's, 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 from what I know, it's an ethnic descriptor. So <coughs> I'd be curious to know what the hell Cory Booker was talking about there. <coughs> and then the kicker, Cory Booker, the, the great, the, the virtue singular in chief, was when he apparently asked her, and uh, not apparently, I did hear her, I did hear him ask, if she, if she has any LGBT law clerks on her staff, and she correctly answered that she's not a she's not working as a judge. She's she's, she's never been a judge. Apparently, she's being appointed from some federal department, which is, you know, that's that's a common way to become a federal judge. For those of you that don't know, you don't necessarily have to have been a judge in, on a lower level, let's say a state or or municipal level. In fact, I, I don't really, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a lawyer out there, I don't believe usually you go from the local and state level to the federal level. Usually you go from one of the, from either private practice or from academia or from serving at some sort of federal agency, some sort of uh, legal back. You, you, do, you do, of course, need some sort of legal certification. You need to be a member of the bar or whatever. But she's not a judge, so she she can't she correctly answered that she's not a judge, therefore she can't have any clerks. So it was just a ridiculous question that that essentially ignored who he was interviewing. So then he had to correct his question, which I guess he has every right to, and asked if she has any LGBT employees under her purview. And she she answered that question, saying she doesn't really pry into the sexual preferences of any of her employees which you know if you're living in america especially in 2019 why would you ever 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 try to ask somebody anything relating to that because if you do it's a it's an invitation to get sued and then fired <coughs> and then have your entire career ruined so it, it it's just ridiculous cory booker the senator for you know, instead of the senator for New Jersey, it's just a senator for LGBTQ. I don't understand why the guy has to constantly uh, dickwag, dickwag all the time for gay rights, when in reality, he, 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 he's judging a person based on their 
ability to try a case, to not try a case, to judge a case that is being tr tried before them. Now, I understand there's people out there, I, I personally am not a supporter of the gay community, but I, I think people should all have the same civil liberties, even even them, even though that, uh, you know, in many cases, I think that the, the, the quote unquote gay community, what they've done in order to limit civil liberties is, is just ridiculous in terms of the speech policing and how much they, they go to lengths to, 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 to force people to try to, you know, self-censor, things like that. But, like, I'm not one of these people that's trying to overturn decisions that have given them freedoms to, to live the way they want to, okay? I'm not trying to have police knock down the doors of these gay bars or whatever like they used to 40 or 50 years ago. I think, I think that was a, a tremendous waste of time. And a lot of people had their careers and lives ruined for for what social gain? I'm not sure. Um, I definitely think that this atmosphere where you're not allowed to make fun of people for things that are that are actually funny. You know, you, you used to be able to make jokes all the time. All the, this this was when I was a kid. This wasn't that long ago. If you watch Mad TV, they were constantly ragging on people <coughs> like Anne Hage and uh, Ellen DeGeneres. It was it was hilarious. And it still is. If you go back, you look at those clips from 20 years ago, that, that was great comedy on all of those um, shows. You know, you had Mango on SNL. If, if anybody knows the Mango character from SNL, it was an amazing character with Chris Kattan. It was hilarious. And uh, that, I think, is really the, <coughs> the difference between <coughs> people who are, who are actual liberal thinkers and people who are liberal believers. Okay, a liberal thinker, I think, is willing to accept sometimes the hard truth that, that cer certain things that they prefer in life don't necessarily pertain to the rest of the world, okay? I, I, I think, like, I, I think I'm not going to get everything that I want in life. That, that's kind of the way that you have to approach the Supreme Court. With Cory Booker, you can't. he doesn't understand that. He wants the Supreme Court nominee to be basically the type of person who would pass a casting call for glee and that's not the way the supreme court is supposed to work it's supposed to be somebody who can actually do the job of determining whether a case is you know who, who is the correct um the correct litigant in a case that's the best i can i can articulate it so that's about it uh this was a short one i'm on my way home gonna be talking with forgotten millennials tonight about the super bowl so I think this video will be up before that, but maybe not very long. So you can check it out afterwards. Also, please like this channel, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to me on BitChute and on Cocoscope, and I'll talk to you guys later.